Our paper describes a way to automatically determine gradients to functions that contain discontinuities. This video demonstrates the use of this idea for optimizing parameters of shaders to match a particular target image. Our first example will be to match the parameters of a shader that can draw rings so that it matches the Olympic rings logo shown here. Our optimization starts with a random initialization, and of course it looks nothing like the target. During optimization, we search for a set of parameters to the shader that will render the target image. After it converges, the result is pretty good. However, the ring intersection shown in the red box is not correct. Notice in the target image, the rings overlap differently. We introduce another approach involving randomized variables. Initially, they have high variance, but during optimization, the variance reduces as we approach convergence. Notice the ring ordering is now correct compared to the target image. In our next example, we modify our rings shader so that it can draw outline rings as in the Celtic knot. This task is more difficult for the optimization process because each ring is the same color, so the random variables really help avoid getting stuck in local minimum. Here is the converged result. Next, we can modify the shader to add rainbow colors, and further modify it to add animation. This is a key benefit of having a program representation of such artwork. Our next example is a shader that uses remarching towards a set of boxes to draw this TensorFlow logo. Because it involves remarching, we cannot use random variables during optimization. We also wrote a different shader that uses recasting. It is able to use random variables during optimization. Since we have a shader that represents the logo in 3D, we can move the camera to examine the logo from different directions, revealing the T and F letters in TensorFlow. Our next shader can express the SIGGRAPH logo shown here, using 3D geometry and ray marching. Here we search for optimal parameters. We use random variables for the lighting directions, which produces the speckled effect, but not for the other parameters. After convergence, we can load the resulting shader as a GLSL program into the website shadertoy.com and edit it interactively. Here we show activating some code that animates a few geometric parameters. We adjust the shape of a cone that cuts out the middle of the logo. We also animate the angles of the two planes that cut the red and blue spheres. Here we show a program published by Shader Toy author IQ in 2013. It creates geometry inspired by the SIGGRAPH logo, but with a cool bumping animation added to it. Combining code from IQ's shader with our 3D geometry, we get an animation that more accurately reproduces the shape of the SIGGRAPH logo together with IQ's amazing animation. Our last example extends the optimization framework so that a rope can animate to match a given set of keyframes. Here, the rope illustrates tying a knot, passing through the given keyframes. Here are 8 target keyframes for a knot involving two ropes. Again, the ropes extend and bend to pass through the target keyframes, illustrating tying this particular knot. Thanks for watching our video.